Welcome back to Omaha 8, Decide Your Fate. As you recall, we were playing 3060 Omaha 8 um, with Ace King Queen 3 double suited in cutoff position, facing a raise from, from our neighbor. Even though this hand is strong, in 08 it's often better to make raises and aggressive moves when there are some community cards up, so after the flop, turn, or river. This is because most hand equities end up being quite close to each other pre-flop. So I chose to make the call here. Um, also kind of in hopes that the players in the blinds might come in cheaply, which will ensure that if I make a flush, I'll get paid off by a worse flush. Another reason that I choose to just call is versus this player in, in specific. We have uh, a lengthy history, and I know that he will certainly bet the flop, the turn, and the river, unless I show aggression. So I know that this player is going to barrel off versus me. Versus a standard or unknown opponent in this position in the hijack, two before the button, I start imagining that their hand is probably a hand with ace, deuce, and some combination of two other cards. So ace, deuce, x, x. They're really in middle position, so you don't really assume that they're putting in a raise in an attempt to steal. So we make the call. There we go. Everybody else folds. And the flop comes four of hearts, five of clubs, ten of clubs. We're pretty happy over the flop. We flop the nut flush draw and the second best low draw. Really, I wouldn't fold this hand if the player could put in four bets cold. When they bet, I have to decide what I'm going to do here. And I opt to just call because my hand has a strong two-way opportunity. So what that means is my hand can win the high and it can also potentially have a good shot at the low. So I'm hoping that I'm going to make the nut flush and naturally the two of clubs would be my dream card to have come off. If I only had a flush draw, say for example instead of the three of diamonds I had the four of diamonds, ace, king, queen, four, that would mean that my low had been counterfeit because it, there's the four of hearts there already. At this stage I would consider raising that hand in an attempt to, to be able to get my opponent to check the turn so I can check it back and get to the river more cheaply. But at this stage, with a strong two-way hand, I don't want to frighten my opponent or give him any reason to check when the flush comes on the turn, in hopes that he will continue to bet and then I can raise and build the pot. At this point, I also don't really have a reason to believe that my low would be good if my hand doesn't improve. It's kind of like an emergency backup. I expect my opponent to have a hand with ace-deuce or ace-three probably. And if they have ace three, they could easily have a pair, which would be beating me for high at, the, at this time. So we make the call, and the turn comes the queen of hearts. Again, our opponent bets. Now, our hand has improved, not in the way we had initially hoped, but now having top pair and top kicker is really quite strong alongside our combo draws. We've also picked up another draw to make a straight. So with the jack to come off, we would make Broadway. So we have a, a draw to Broadway, a wheel, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or a flush. We do, even at this stage, if we don't improve our high hand any further and no low comes, say for example the board pairs, like a 4 comes or a 5 comes on the river, Often our hand will be good enough to scoop the high. In Omaha High Low Split in particular, sometimes the everybody is so focused on low draws that the high hands that are needed aren't as strong as if you were considering playing PLO or limit Omaha. With that in mind, we know that we're, we're at least calling the turn and we'll be calling the river on most cards to attempt to catch catch bluffs like a low a missed low draw. Cards that would make us want to fold on the river would be seeing a three, would be seeing um not too many actually. <laughs> seeing a three because we'd be concerned that our that the villain has a has a five four three two one and that two pair wouldn't be that good to to, to win with. Other cards we would maybe consider folding to a heart but even still, because it goes running hearts, it would be unlikely that our, our villain has that flush draw. 
So this is where I pause the video. What was your fate? I sure hope you didn't fold. For interest sake, I went to Pro Poker Tools and compared my hand, Ace, King, Queen, Three, Double Suited, to the hand I've put the villain on, which is Ace, Deuce, X, X, where X is any card. And so they run that hundreds of thousands of times, and they find that my hand versus Ace, Deuce, X, X has 61.5% equity in this situation. So by raising on this turn, we're getting really good value, and we're also taking control of the pot so we can decide what to do on the river in case that darn three decides to show up. What I mean by taking control of the pot is that I'm raising in hopes that my opponent will be worried on the river, and then we'll check back their hand. We'll, we'll check their hand, giving me the opportunity then to check back or bet, depending on the river card. On the, this river, I would be betting any, any twos, any, any low that doesn't counterfeit me, any club, and probably any jack, including the jack of hearts. And I would strongly consider betting if the board paired, especially if it was a queen that came. So, I make the decision to put in the raise, the opponent calls, and the river comes, the four of clubs. They check, like we expected them to, to do, and we had hoped that they would do on almost any card on the river, which leaves the decision ultimately in our hand. So now, despite the board pairing and the risk of a full house, we're actually quite happy with this card. We now have the best flush possible, and now there's no low. So we aren't overly worried that this villain would have a full house because we didn't get re-raised on the turn. We would have expected that if, if they had trips or three of a kind that we would have gotten re-raised or even sometimes some players will play two pair that aggressively. So we bet the river for value and get paid off. As it turns out, the opponent happened to have a hand that had an advantage over mine on the turn. However, at this time, I was able to connect with the river, and that pot got pushed in the right direction. So, next time, his hand isn't likely to be so strong. In this situation, because I chose to raise the turn, I end up getting an extra bet out of our opponent, because really they can't be entirely certain what I have. And with them having aces, they could think maybe I was just raising a hand like queen 10, and now aces and fours beats two pair of queens and tens. So they're in a spot where even though they realize the flush draw made it, they can't be convinced that I have it, so they have to pay me off. I expect that if I had chosen to just call the turn, this opponent may have checked that river and then ultimately called with their hand again. Of course, I still would have won the pot, but I would have missed out on an extra big bet, which is $60 in this case. Getting those extra bets in is really key, especially in limit 08. That's where you make your money. So knowing when to call versus raising can really improve your bankroll at the end of the day. So did you put in the raise on the turn, getting your maximum value? I think you probably did. Good work. We'll see you on the next episode of Omaha Decide Your Fate.